Hey everyone, welcome to the Kraka Cafe. My name is Kraka, and today I'm going to be serving you up some Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, I do play this game a lot, you know, and I kind of help my free company manage their airship, so I thought, hey, why the hell not would I want to do a, like a kind of introductory to the free company workshop slash airship kind of guide. You know, they're both in here, and you got, you know, the the schematic board and this isn't all just for the airship it's for a little bit of everything as far as like stuff in the free company goes so well let's get started now this is your free company workshop it will always look the same for every free company you know you'll have your stairways to your main fc room company chest your summoning bell your schematic board uh this guy's like your little helper and also has some stuff you can buy for the airship your fabrication station where you make everything and you get your flight control panel over here, which is where you mess with the airship. Now, uh, I'm assuming you all know how this door works, so we're just going to skip that first thing. <laughs> the company chest is also pretty self-explanatory, you know. Uh, most of you guys know you got your 1, 2, and 3 slots, you know, your crystals, your monies, that kind of stuff. Where people can donate stuff, store stuff, etc., etc. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's much that. Summoning bell, it's also self-explanatory. You know, you have these things everywhere, so you should already know about those. Uh, your schematic board. Alright, so here's something new. <coughs> now this, you're going to be using to plan out your projects that you're going to be making over at the fabrication station. Let's open her up and take a look. Now, our free company has already done a couple things, especially in the airship area, but I'm going to tell you a little about them anyway, you know, if you've already done them. Let's see, normally here you're going to have prototype 2 to 7, here you can see we only have 4 to 7, and each one is a tier of airship. Um, starting from 2, you're going to have the Invincible, 3 is the Enterprise parts, 4 is the Invincible 2 parts, 5 is the Odyssey parts, 6 is the Tetanora parts, and 7 is the Vitgans parts. Now, these get progressively better, so you don't have to worry about, oh, should I do tier 1, tier 2, etc. No, they're almost, I mean, they're always going to be better. However, your airship can't always, you know, equip all the parts you want. As it ranks up, you can use more parts, and eventually when you max it out, you'll still have to choose, like, the very end. You, ca you can't use all of the Tatanora, the Type 7 parts, uh, because, you know, airships just don't have that ability yet. However... <coughs> you have to choose bits and pieces of them, and then there's there's a whole another thing for which pieces are the best for what you're doing, and I'll explain that a little later, but just know this for now. Um, these all have their little required materials. When you have them in your inventory, you can just click on them, and it will allow you to hand them in, and then it will instantly put the recipes right in your crafting station. Um, these require materials that you're not going to be familiar with and may have heard of, like in this case of four here we got balsa wood lumber and bamboo weave these are all materials more than likely i.e yes you're going to find with the airship itself that's why it starts you off with the bronco parts in the beginning which is like the lowest of tier stuff which you can make already and then you have to use your airship to find more items to make higher tier airships and then you build, build the next one and so on and so on <coughs> Uh, that's all you need to really know about these. Now, housing projects. These are basically house skins. Um, these, I mean, these are pretty much just for aesthetics of your free company house. You can make it kind of look like a restaurant, or an armor shop, weapon shop, or a mog house. As far as I know, this is just purely the outside. Um, I'll, I can show you over on the crafting station when we get there. Um, but for now, these, again, these all have materials that you're going to need from using the airship, so. Uh, the ethereal wheels. Now, you'll see at the top of my screen here, I got a couple buffs going on. One here is the heat of battle, and another one here is earth and water. These are free company buffs that you normally would gain through your free company. And the ethereal wheels, not, yes, ethereal wheels. These all start from, I believe, rank 2. Yes, rank 2, and there's 2, 3, and 4 are all missing from Mars, because you already have those. Those are all the level 2 ethereal wheels. Uh, 5, 6, and 7 are all the level 3 ethereal wheels. Um, and then the wheel stands, we don't, we haven't actually gained one of these yet. Our wheel, your wheel stand starts out at level 2, I believe, 
and then prototype 2 allows you to make a level 3, and then 3 makes you level 4, and 5 makes you a level 5. Or starts out with 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, yeah, so 4 makes 5. Yeah, I know, it's it's real uh, real lovely how they put that one up there. Uh, but basically, your, your basic level 2 wheel stand will make um, slots for a level 1 wheel, a level 2 wheel, and a level 3 wheel. And as you go up, you'll just add more slots from the bottom to the top. Like, a level 3 stand will add, or I'm sorry, a level 4 stand will add 1 to a level 1, so you can have 2 level 1s, 1 level 2, 1 level 3, and then the 5 will be one, 2 level 1s, 2 level 2s, and 1 level 3. Yeah, that's, that's kind of how they have it ordered for now. <coughs> and I can actually give you real quick a demo on these things, because i got one outside waiting for us here. So, uh, the buffs are right here in your free company. You'll see right now, you see these are active, how much hours they have left. Um, and these are the inactive ones. These are the ones you have prepared that you can either A, buy with credits, or B, generate from the ethereal wheels. Uh, the ethereal wheels you do have to buy and plug them into, into the machine, which we'll go to right now. And I can show you real quick here. Jump out of here. So the ethereal wheel is right here. Well, the wheel stand, I should say. Now you see this one here is glowing, sparkly, kind of rotating around. That means it's ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this one. This is a grade one wheel. So you take it out. It's primed, it's ready to go. So then you click back on your wheel again. You're going to say convert. You click on this. Just use it. Yes. Bam! It says it's ready for activation. You get like a little light beam, and now I can go back in here. Oh, hey, another heat of battle is ready to go. So that's how you do them for free, so to speak. Anyway, they're not actually free. But. So let me grab you. Uh, let's see, the wheels are right here for my FC chest. So I'm going to take one of these out. And then I'll put it right in here. Place. Use. Now these take about 20 hours for grade 1s, grade 2s I'm, I'm guessing is probably the same amount of time, maybe even more time because they're higher level. Um, level 1s, like for instance, uh, the Heat of Battle, I believe it's like a 5% XP increase for, for um, any type of combat. And then the second one up, which is from grade 2s, is I think 10%, then it goes 15%. They just, just know that they increase you know, on a good percentage base as you go up one by one. Now, um, let's see, this guy is more important to the airship, so I'll come back to him, but for now, let's go to the fabrication station. Here's where you make your stuff. Uh, the company crafting log is basically, it always will set you uh, back on airship parts, and like I said, here are the Broncos. This is what your basic, basic airship is going to be, made of these parts very first, and then you'll move up to Invincible, Enterprise, which is the ones that we got here. Ethereal wheels. Oh, those are real. The real stand. Like I said, you start out at level two, as far as I know. Um, then you, you got your materials here. This requires cobalt stuff, dark steel, ink, electrum, rosewood, mithril, more electrum, orange and gold ink, and then there's even even more stuff after that. You know, you're asking me why is there three phases here? Oh, well, it's because each phase, like you basically contribute the materials for these phases for phase one, and then you have to advance it to phase two, and you contribute more, advance it, and then you contribute more, and then you're done. And you actually make it by the time you get through phase three. So it's a lot of work to get some parts in here. The wheels, as far as I know, they are just one phase. I don't have access to level three wheels, but I would also assume that they are likely one phase because you want to make these and be done with it. <coughs> now, to advance phases in the fabrication station, oh yeah, and here's the, uh, sorry, here's the little, the house skin, so to speak, and uh, you have each one you can do, you got your exterior wall, you have your roof, your door, your window, your fence, and you'll see that some of these just have a phase one, roof decoration, signboard, wall decoration, and exterior walls seem to have the most phases here, along with what the roof. Please tell me the door is not three phases. Okay, so just the two first two parts are three phases. But it's a lot of work to do all of these. And they have small, medium, large, of course, because that is for the size of the house that you have 
or maybe even land plot. I personally don't own a house because, um, just for, just so you know, <laughs> most land plots are on for, you know, for auction, and on my server in particular, uh, I think one recently around near our free company house was like 26 million go, and I ain't that rich, so I don't have to worry about the house stuff. Uh, I just worry about this stuff. It's much easier. <coughs> now, let's take a look at one of these in, a, in action now. You see it's blank up here. Normally, if you're like in a phase 2 or phase 3, here, let me go back up. In phase 2 or phase 3, you'd see something here. Like, there's little, little bits and knobs, but right now it's totally blank. Oh, wait, no, no. There is one tiny little bar in there. Yeah, that's how much we've progressed. Ain't much for this part, but... Anyway, back to the contributing. So here, you will see how much you're going to need, but this is not completely how much. This lets you know in what intervals you can turn these in. So this is 10, and this is total 30. So you're going to need three sets of 10 to turn this in. It tells you how much you have in your inventory, which is nice, and then it tells you how much XP you're going to get, which is not very much. I mean, it's it's pretty poor, even for like, you know, I see the level 52 armor, to turn in these garland steel parts, and they're only worth 1,163 per you turn per you turn in, which is means per three, as far as I know. So this is very cheap on XP game, and is very expensive if you're going to buy it. Naturally, I would suggest that you craft them. Um, also, another important thing too, it mentions the class here in the levels. This will also let you know the levels that you need to typically craft these items. However, you also need to be the level of the class that's here to even turn them in in the first place. Um, in other words, you have to be a blacksmith level 26 to even turn in steel ingots. You have to be a blacksmith 43 to be even turning in cobalt rivets, and you know armor smith for cobalt joints and armor smith for garland steel. Now, garland steel is a very common part in pretty much every airship, and uh, pretty much just about everything airship wise so garland steel you're probably going to need almost all the time and this is just phase one and this is already looking pretty costly but like i said if you're a crafter definitely craft it you're going to need the crafting levels to turn them in in the first place anyway um so you know just you want you're going to want to craft it trust me you really want to craft it of course, if you think that you messed up or something, you can discontinue your project, which, you know, obviously I'm not going to do because they've already started working on this. Ah, I almost forgot to mention a few things. Now, when you're advancing your ship, or whatever you happen to be making, whoops, uh, when your progress gets to the next phase and you need to advance it, that means you are going to need four crafters. They don't have to be free company members. But you need four crafters of any level, it doesn't even matter, um, to be in a light party, party four, in this room, the company, you know, workshop. And then once everybody's in here, then you can go to your fabrication section, station, click on the, th on, uh, here, there will be an option that says advance, and you click on that, and then it will automatically advance it for you. This is usually one of the hardest things to do. Uh, most people will go to the party finder down here, you know, do a party, and say, Hey, you know, 10k if yo, help me advance airship. And most people will know what you're talking about. You might want to move it down to like a 4 though. Here, let me knock these out. Bam. 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 And some people won't need... You know, won't worry about taking your money. Some people will do it first for fun. You can always just put it up that you need. I usually just put 10k up because I like people to be compensated at least a little bit for just walking all the way over here and coming into the company workshop. <coughs> but yeah, I need four. Don't have to be free company members. Uh, but they do have to be free company members if you're talking about doing the contribute the contribution of materials. This has to be free company members, and you're doing this part here. But when you're just advancing. No, it can be four any random people, ideally ones yourself. They can all be level one crafters, don't matter. Just get the people, get them in here, advance, and then they can be on their merry old way. And as can you, uh, on to your next part where you're putting more stuff in, or hopefully you'll be finishing it. Okay, so this will be the meat and potatoes of this little spiel here. This is going to be all about the airships, 
and how they work, how you build them, etc., etc. Because they've released a bits and pieces over patches, and as of now, this is Threat 3.2, so I figured I could do something that's more complete and not have to worry about bits and bobs here. And there's going to be your one stop shop for all your airship information. Now, normally when you start off, you're not going to have any airships, you know they don't give you an airship at all. I don't think they even give you the workshop. So what you have to do to get your first airship, now when you start up in here you'll have your basic parts, your Bronco parts that you're going to need. So you'll have to make all four pieces of the Bronco which is um, from what I think it's what, aft castle, forecastle, let me just go in here real quick. Company crafting log. So you're going to need your hull, your rigging, aft, castle, and forecastle. All four of these parts. Once you have a whole four of these, you're still not done. Uh, you also need to get something called uh, company credits, I believe, or no, airship credits. Let me see, they're right in here. Flight credits, I'm sorry. Uh, these little suckers here, you're going to need three of them to start off with. <coughs> and this is either before or after you craft your airship. It really does not matter. Uh, as long as you have both at the point when you try to do this. Because if you don't, it won't let you do it. Like I'll go over here, for example. We'll click on this one because uh, we have the second airship slot available and it's going to tell me flat out you have to have the flight credits in your inventory and the airship components in your inventory. So the flight credits, they come from the resident caretakers in the respective areas they're in for the goblet, the mist, and I forget the other one. But uh, I'll go up, poke outside. I'm not going to walk all the way over there because there's really no need. Um, but I can show you what it looks like on the map. <coughs> yeah, that's the uh, that's the event song for the, uh, the Easter type themed event. The, I think it's like Hatchling or something. So you just look for this little head over here. Resident caretaker is right over here, at least in the goblet. You know, find the head, you'll find the guy that you're looking for to get those credits from. He sells some other stuff that you can get for uh, company credits. Um, most of them are just aesthetic stuff, so you really don't have to worry about what else he's selling, just the company credits. They're 10,000 each. You know, if you're a new free company, you may not have, you know, 30,000 to drop on it, but getting credits, not very hard to do. Um, you get them from doing anything, from anybody in your free company just doing dungeons, crafting, you know, same stuff you're going to be doing every time you log on, so you'll get them eventually, so do, do not fret on it at all. Now, I am going to... I was going to pull an airship. Ah, forgot. Well, should I talk about him first? Probably not. Let's just talk about the airship first. So let me get mine off its voyage here. It's what it shows here is its voyage complete. This is its rank. These are basically flying retainers. Super simple, you know, you don't have to sign in the class, you know, or any of that. But there is like a whole little metagame to this thing. So let's pull this in. Now this is going to be the voyage log. This is going to tell you what happened to your airship as it was out getting stuff for you. <coughs> now there is different ways to interpret this log. And it is affected different ways by your parts and such. But I'll go through your real quick. Rating C... Um, which means it did okay. You know, we all know what C means. I don't have to explain that one. Uh, deep root crystals. These are crystals that are used for an ethereal wheel production, so you will need these. Um, mine materia, I mean, that's materia. And then there's ice crystals in here, too. Lots of blue. Um, so it tells you, you know, it reached the sector you're going to. Well, well Abathus Spine is right. It starts out the spine, then it reaches the sector. And it says you're commencing survey. Okay, and it says you're experiencing violent turbulence. Violent turbulence uh, means that whatever you're doing here is going to be significantly hindered. And it even says it right here. Airship surveillance labels unaffected, but exploratory key will be significantly hindered. Um, now it says here that high quality deep blue crystals discovered. You can see right here this thing is not high quality. Um, it just means that it found like a good item. High quality doesn't always mean like an an actual HQ item. So don't let it fool you because you really can't, you know, HQ materials. However, you can HQ deep deep the crystals. They they do turn up. Um okay, so reading on. So it says low retrieval levels revolt and disappointing extraction yield. So sometimes that happens. There's a lot of RNG or RNGs as we like to call it. 
that comes into these these trips and extracts and stuff like that. There are ways to increase your odds, but you know, you're still at the mercy of good old R and Jesus. So that's kinda how that's gonna go. Uh, so now it says additional anomalies, continue exploration, that means it's going to try to find another item, and of course more violent turbulence. And then it says it finds another high quality deep blue crystal, which I mean, it could have picked up, oh, it says right here, picked up two. So then it's, <laughs> there's some complete, and it says performance rated as abysmal, which means that it's just normal. That's like your normal, and this experience points, you would get a bonus if your, <laughs> if your experience point, if your rating was not abysmal. This was the worst, and you go substandard, satisfactory, and decent. <coughs> uh, so, let's see, then it says changing course to sector 8. Oh, and look here, see, this is an example of what will happen too. Occasionally you will find new sectors, like in this one it says sector 10 discovered. Although I've heard from other people there is some kind of bug or whatever that if you go back to look at this voyage rating, you won't see that sector there. Only the first person who sees this will. So don't freak out if, you, you know, if you're know if you one of the guys that helps run the airship for your free company and you see that um, you don't see the discovery on there. You know, it still could have been discovered. You know, you can always talk to the person who opened it or just look on the uh, map and you'll see which what you need. <coughs> okay, so moving on. So sex rate reach, commencing survey, high winds, which just means it's you know slightly hindered as it says here. And then this is just poor retrieval levels, resulting <laughs> extremely disappointing extraction yield. And they have really flavorful sentences. Uh, this is just mine materia, which is eh, I mean it's something you know you can't complain. And then additional anomalies. However, current airship condition found insufficient for further exploration. That just means that either, um, I believe that means like uh, more parts can allow you more time out to go and grab stuff. So either A, it's running out of time in this particular area, or B, it's just usually sometimes it can be a surveillance issue. <coughs> uh, but usually it will tell you. So for this case, I believe it's just time, uh, probably due to the turbulence. And then it says changing course. And then, you know, Sector 11 reach, more violent turbulence. This is pretty brutal sending these out, by the way. Especially in the beginning, you're not going to get a lot of stuff. You know, it's it's a slow process. It's going to take a while. Um, but now you get the general idea of what you're looking for. So I'll switch to parade, return to workshop. We'll finalize this. And it gained a rank, which is great. And it tells you right here, bam, rank, rank 39 in the thing. And sector 10 has been discovered, so it lets me know what's going on. Now, here's where we're starting to get to the nitty gritty of airship parts. <coughs> so, when you say ready airship exploratory mission, this is talking about the diadem. Diadem is an area that you can usually go to um, with your FC members to go and kill monsters and mine, and you, you can do a little bit of everything in here. I think botany as well. And all of them attributes to the the goal that you've gone there for, which usually is to get some um, crafting materials um, or materials, or um, I think there actually is a mount uh, that you can buy with the items you get from Diadem. And I think there is a couple other things, you know, some of them cosmetic, but mostly I believe it's used for materia for both sides, crafting and for for battle. Um, <coughs> Also, in a lot of crafting materials, too. Some of them really high. I know some of them that do come from the the new nodes in the Heavensward areas that are, I think, what the uh, unspoiled nodes that kind of appear and disappear. Uh, since there's something I just remembered, I'm going to attend to this real quick before I forget, because I know there's always questions about this. When you contribute materials for what goes on in here, um, you can contribute high quality materials, which will give you double the XP. Ooh, yeah, I know, it's not really that much. Um, but also, by contributing high quality materials, it good old RNG Jesus comes in and says, Hey, let me roll a dice for you, and we'll give you better odds if you turn in high quality materials. And if, you, if, you're, if the odds are in your favor, then you may get an excellent or an outstanding uh, progress made, which will reduce the amount of materials required on the next step. The first will always be the same, because it starts out like that. Um, is it worth it? 
Ooh, depends on the stuff. You know, steel ingots, okay, you know, I could throw any high quality steel ingots. Those are not too bad. Cobalt eh, and cobalt joint, eh, you know, maybe if I have the money or, you know, maybe if I feel like putting in the extra effort to make them high quality. Garland steel is going to be a little harder. You know, some of the stuff that, that you need to build out here are locked up in master books as well, so make sure you also know that. Um, <coughs> and uh, so your mer your mileage may vary use your best judgment you know if you if you loaded loaded in gel then sure why not go high quality but you really do not need to <coughs> so back to the airship so we know ready now it's for diadem there also is a diadem hard mode which we don't have unlocked because you need i believe rank 50 airship for that one um but as far as i know all of them are level 60 as far as the diadem is concerned yeah, so they also have a certain surveillance level. You you start out with easy and the normal one already popped up there. The hard one is the one you have to discover through exploring. So that's another thing you gotta find on your list of things you gotta get uh, when you're out there exploring with your airship. Now, <coughs> so just like, well, not like a retainer. Retainers, you don't have to repair their gear. However, airships, you do. So you see here, these are a little down. You know, they've been damaged a little bit, and these will uh, start affecting your trips at a certain point. Right now, uh, as far as I know, they don't. I think they only start affecting it when they get much, much lower, like around 20, 30 percent. That's probably a good idea when you want to repair them. Also, airship repair materials are not cheap. Um, they can be made by any crafting class. They all require different crystals, but all the same materials. I think I still got a couple sitting in here. Yeah, here's some airship repair materials. So. Anybody can make those, any crafting class, but I believe it's a level 50 and in mastery book numero uno, the one star book, I believe. So you will need to be that high to make them, which is kind of dumb, but you know, what can you do? I think some of them are probably sold in the market, so you can always look for them there. But knowing people, they probably have jacked up the prices. That's kind of how that goes. You know how it is, you guys who um, just go for combat and don't really craft very much, you're kind of at the mercy of the market board. Or if you're fortunate enough to be in a uh, free company that has lots of crafters in it, you can usually commission some of them. And they're, they're much easier to deal with rather than just being at the mercy of the market board. Because it can be really, really costly. And you'll end up paying out your butt, out your nose, out of every orifice you got in Gil. Trust me. <coughs> and you really don't want to be doing that to yourself. Not unless you are a glutton for punishment. Ah, so deploying airship on exploratory voyages. Now, you need ceruleum tanks to do this, which is what the little guy over in the corner is for. And this tells you here, it shows you all the sectors that we have unlocked. We don't have all of them unlocked, but, you know, that's no big deal. So, let me go grab the tank of roofs. Right over here. He normally will sell them, so I'll just grab like 10 or something. Uh, Mission Trillium, that is also for the Diadem as well. So They can be located here because when you go to go into the Diadem, you need every free company member to have at least one in their inventory for the mission. So normally you'd congregate in here and you'd go out through the uh, through the little function that allows you to uh, ready for an exploratory mission. So I got the Trillium tanks now. So... Now these all have totally different materials. Mm, now, one thing that you should remember, though, uh, the Garland Steel. Uh, that sucker is one thing you're going to need a lot of, and it requires something called Vivanite. Vivanite is only from sectors 1 and 2. I mean, it may not be only only, but that's one of the easiest ways to get Vivanite. Uh, the Bamboo Weave, which you're going to need for prototyping, that's also in sectors 1 and 2. Uh, red Moco Grass, which I believe is for ethereal wheels, ethereal stands, that's in sectors 3 and 4. And occasionally you'll pick up Coke, Dark Steel Ore, you know, other random things. Uh, balsa Wood Scraps are from sectors 3 and 4. Deep Crystals start at sectors 5, 6, and 7. I'm not going to go through all these because there is, let's see, I think now, as of the latest patch, there are 24 sectors. Yes, 24 sectors. So, there's a lot to go through. <coughs> However, we're a little short on Vivanite, so I think I'm going to go send us on over to sectors 1 and 2. So, now, the little blue dot down here is where your airship is being launched from. So, 
the further you go away, the more Cerulean Tank is going to cost you. It also will let you know how difficult of an area it is. You can see the little 1 stars, 2 stars, 3 stars. They kind of change color from what looks, looks like bronze to silver to show you how hard they are. Uh, the harder areas, you're going to need more airship, well not more airship parts, but better airship parts. Because you're going to need typically need higher surveillance. <coughs> and I think like a higher durability value for your airship. I don't remember the like the specific points off the top of my head, but I'll I'll go into those right after this. So <clears throat> for now, I'm just gonna send my dude off to sectors one and two, pick up some vivanite. So I'll pick one, pick two. Now because we have s enough uh, good gear for our airship, so so to speak, um, I can actually go to another sector if I want. Uh, mind you, the more spread out these are the most likely you'll be able to go to another sector. As you can see here, you can have up to five, uh, straight up. It will cost you more Cerulean tanks to go further, but, you know, that's, that's fine. <coughs> so, what else would I need? Sector four, that we got, uh, Hunko Grass, Steep Red Crystal. Mm, don't really need that stuff. Let's see. Also, Wood Lumber would be nice to have. That's in sector eight and nine. Uh, so let's go ahead and put Sector 8, third destination. And as you see your flight distance, this is the most flight that your airship can currently travel. And this is how many tanks you're going to use, how much about XP you're going to get. And it tells you how many hours and minutes it's going to take to do all this. And of course it says right here, time to destination, time to survey, etc. So that'll let you know how long it's going to take for each part. Typically your airship trips are going to be, you know, about... Uh, well, if we do the math here, it's what this is about four hours, six hours, like almost seven hours total just for one area. So, and they get longer as you go on. Now, of course, you if you get better parts, it can reduce this time. <coughs> but I'm gonna go ahead and deploy it. We can watch as our airship takes off into the wild blue yonder, because that's always a fun thing to. Not everybody gets to see this cutscene because not everybody in a free company can manage the airship. It's all dependent upon your uh, free company leader, they have to get permissions, etc. But I'm telling you right now, doing this as a one-man job is not easy. But some people do do it. There are some free companies that are just like a couple guys who just want airship shit for free. Free, quote-unquote, because you still have to pay for the Cerulean tanks, materials, etc., etc. And that will allow you to get access to this stuff now. So... Uh, and I'm sure you saw in the options before that you can, uh, you know, paint your airship, you can re refit it, repair it, that kind of stuff. Um, so if you have dye, you can feel free to paint it whatever color you want. As you saw in ours, it looks like it's a bit reddish looking. Now, <coughs> so, um, let's look at parts real quick here, and I can describe to you a little bit about what these parts do. Now, this, this has all of the numbers on here, so we'll start from top to bottom. Tells you what rank they are, which means what rank ship you're going to need. Components means how much components you use up. Your rank and components go up as your airship levels up. Uh, surveillance. Now, surveillance is an important one. That one will imp in give you a probability of gathering a second item in each sector you visit, and it may also will influence the, your ability to find new sectors and unlocks. Um, and then after that, you're going to have retrieval, which is pretty much self-explanatory. You know, increases the uh, item extraction ability, you know, gives you more items, <coughs> higher quantities, basically. Speed is simply just how fast your airship can travel from place to place. More speed will reduce the time it takes to return and for it to go out and survey and all that other fun stuff. So if you really want to reduce the time for it to come back to you, then you're going to need your speed. Range just allows your air to travel further from different sectors. As you saw, I queued it up for three. You know, in, in the early points, you'll probably only be able to do one or maybe two. Favor. Uh, Nobody really knows 100% what favor does, but most people say that it affects the high quality of like uh, the items you pick up, like they, whether they're high quality or not, there is saying that it also affects the weather conditions. So basically, this is your your luck factor in your airship. <coughs> now you also have different four different parts: hull rigging, forecastle, aft castle. Your hull typically 
is mostly for range and a little minus on favor, so you know that this is mostly for traveling further and visiting more sectors. Rigging, this is going to be your speed, and it gives you a slight penalty on your range and retrieval. <coughs> the, uh, it's funny it's called a bladder. I know, I'm five, I know. Rigging is uh, increasing the speed of your airship, so that way it just takes less time. Uh, four castles. These are used for, this is the I meme, the surveillance and favor, you know, so this will help you get further out into where you need to go. This is going to be one of your most important parts because your areas are going to be gated off by surveillance. So the sooner you make your newest four castles, like for Bronco, you don't have a choice when you're making a level one warship, you're going to have to make all four parts, but what you want to look into, one of the first things you probably want is more surveillance. Um, so that way you can get out into different sectors. <coughs> and then lastly, we have the aft castle, which is, gives you your retrieval, which basically just gives you uh, the quantity of items that you want. You know, more quantity is great, but this also hit, takes you a hit to your surveillance and speed. So be careful about getting this too soon because you don't want to nerf your surveillance right off the bat. You probably don't want to put this part first. If I had to pick, me personally, I would start with Forecastle, then, let's see, do you, depending on if you want speed, or if you just want to travel out further, um, you may, so, since everything is gated by surveillance, I would probably start Forecastle first, then your hull, which will give you the ability to go out further, your rigging, so that way you can get back faster, and then lastly, your aft castle, so you can get more quantities of the stuff you want. You know, you can't be greedy first, because <laughs> it will keep you from traveling out very far. <coughs> and I'm trying to think if there's any little tips I can provide. Um, you know, Bronco first, and then you now as you level up, you know, you can try to develop your parts pretty quickly. Uh, but uh, don't go too fast, because you have to remember that your level will also turn how much parts you can put on, so don't get too far ahead of yourself. It's fine if you do, it levels up pretty quick. I mean, this thing levels up pretty much once every time I send it out, so you don't have to worry too much about that. As far as, like, the big unlocks go, in case you wish to know, the big unlocks would be, like, um, the second, third, and fourth airships. Yes, you can unlock up to four, so you can have, like, a little fleet of them. Diadem Hard is locked under sectors 18, 20, 21, and 22. Now the number of airships are locked under sectors. Uh, sector 8 will give you your second airship, sector 14 will give you your third, and sector 18 will give you your fourth. Uh, and to give you an idea, I can go back in here and pull up the map again. You know, I can say recall airship, but I'm not actually going to recall it. Oh, well, that's previous navigational charts. Here we are. Um, <coughs> so sector 8 is, let's see, this is 2, this is 5, it's 7, this is 8. This will give you your second airship right here. And then we go 5, 6, 11, Revan's right here, and then 14 will be down here. That will be your third airship. Now, let's see, we got 5, 7, 10, and then over here is going to be 12. Up here is probably going to be 16 in this place. And we got 17 over in this swirly thing, and then 18 is going to be right over here. That will be your fourth airship. Now, <coughs> I must remind you that even though the first one cost three of those, uh, cr the flight credits, the second one also cost three flight credits. However, when you get your, to your third one, it's going to cost you more. Um, I don't know exactly how many credits, just know it will cost you more. Every time you get to the third and fourth one, you're going to need new parts. And this can be a very, very expensive endeavor to do. Um, and the, there is two kinds of schools of thought with this. You can go out this way to expand and go out this way to expand. Uh, doesn't really matter. It's just however you want to do things. You know, research, research, research. I always recommend research. Find out what parts you need, what things you want, that kind of stuff, and s see what you want to do. Now, as far as your prizes, like the big prizes, big ticket items you want from this as of the new patch, there is a uh, orchestron roll, a faded one, of course. 
I think. It might not, maybe not a faded one. No, it's a faded one. That's out in sector 23, which is way out somewhere in here. Um, 24, oh, okay, so it'd probably be somewhere in here. 23 and 24 be out in here. 24 is also a big ticket one because it has to carry something called the Iron Voyage Spoil, and that is how you get the Zoo Mount. It's Z-U. Um, that is a pretty sexy looking mount, in my opinion. It's a big old bird. I like birds. So if you want that, you'll have to send the airship out there. And if you want to start bringing them in for your free company, there is a build on a website, which I'll link below in the uh, description, that tells you the easiest way to just zoo farm like crazy, because it's a hot ticket item right now. And this is the only way to get it, along with that orchestra roll as well. It's the only way to get it is through the airship. And it's a long ways away, even for us. I mean, we've been here, I've been missing this airship probably uh, a couple months, you know, and it's about halfway through the sector, so there's still a lot to do. Now, if you ever get a little bit lost, this mammoth here, you can always talk to him and make small talk, and he'll have different topics you can talk about with him, and he'll help you out a little bit. You know, you can always look up on the website I'll link down at the bottom. Both of them have really good information, the stuff you need. Check them out. Don't be afraid. Um, <coughs> and if you have any questions that maybe I can answer or you don't see on those places, you can feel free to drop me a comment or whatever you like. So anyway, thanks for watching everyone. I'll be uploading videos every Monday and Thursday and occasionally somewhere else along the way. If you'd like to leave me a tip, be sure to like, comment, or subscribe down below. And I will see you when the cafe opens again. Have a good one.